Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Shocking Execution of George Plantagenet One of the most turbulent periods in English history was the War of the Roses, with large amounts of the population divided between their support for the House of Lancaster and the House of York. Both were vying for the English throne and for political supremacy and a dominance across the country. But during the medieval period, there were a number of key figures linked to the conflict who were known for their treachery and backstabbing. One of the most important figures in the dynastic struggle and one of the closest to the king was George Plantagenet. He was the brother of Edward IV and even Richard III. However, he would make a shocking switch during the War of the Roses that Edward could never forgive. For this, he was executed in a horrific fashion. George Plantagenet was born on the 21st of October 1449 in Dublin Castle, and he was born to very noble parents. His father was Richard Plantagenet, the Duke of York, who at the time was serving as Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, and his mother was Cecily Neville. As mentioned, two of George's brothers went on to become Kings of England, and the family were closely linked to the monarchy and were key players in the Wars of the Roses. George's father, the Duke of York, challenged the claim to the English throne held by the House of Lancaster, but he was defeated at the Battle of Wakefield in December of 1460. As a sign against the Yorkists, they cut off the Duke of York's head and then a paper crown was placed on his head when it was shown over Micklegate Bar in York. George's elder brother, Edmund, the Earl of Rutland, was also killed in the battle, and George and his young brother Richard, for their own safety, were then transported to Burgundy to be protected. George's other brother, Edward, known as the Earl of March, inherited the Yorkist claim and continued the campaign against Lancaster, and he did succeed in defeating them at the Battle of Mortimer Cross in February of 1461, and later at the Battle of Teuton. Edward was then proclaimed King Edward IV when he deposited Henry VI and seized the throne for the House of York. Edward entered London victorious and was crowned at Westminster, but this had big repercussions for George. He was now the brother to the king, and Edward rewarded him and his other siblings with titles and grants of land. George became the Duke of Clarence once Edward was on the throne, and his younger brother Richard became the Duke of Gloucester. Edward later married the beautiful Elizabeth Woodville, and he surrounded himself with the infamous Earl of Warwick, known as the Kingmaker, who was considered one of the most prominent powers behind the throne. Whoever Warwick Kingmaker backed won the crown. George himself became close to Warwick the Kingmaker, his cousin Richard Neville, and he wanted to marry his eldest daughter and heir, Isabel Neville. However, this marriage was not supported by the king and Edward refused the marriage. Defiantly, George and Isabel then travelled across to Calais in 1469 where they married. George, because of Edward's refusal, became bitter and decided to side against him, which was incredibly shocking. He grew closer to his father-in-law, the Kingmaker, and together they planned to revolt against Edward. They supported a rebellion in the north, and the King of England discovered his own brother had become rebellious and treacherous, and because of this, he lost his title which was gifted to him, and George fled to France with the Earl of Warwick. Whilst being looked after by Louis XII of France, Warwick turned his attention to the Lancastrian queen, Margaret of Anjou, and allied himself with her. This meant he switched his support from the Yorkist dynasty to the Lancastrians. Margaret was the queen consort to the recently deposed Henry VI. George, siding with his father-in-law, also supported Margaret, and by doing this defied his own brother, switching from the House of York to Lancaster. He defied his own brother, the King of England, and the head of the Yorkist cause. This was seen as dangerous and shocking by the King of England, and he began to become embroiled in a huge dispute with George. George defied his own birthright in the most shocking betrayal. Along with Richard Neville, Warwick Kingmaker, 
George launched an invasion of England and he found himself trying to reinstate the very dynasty he had been fighting against the year before. He realised quickly through this, his trust in the Kingmaker was poorly chosen and he had made a big mistake. He began once again to turn to his brother Edward's side to gain favour and to become trustworthy again. He deserted the Lancastrian cause to dispose Edward and then also deserted the Earl of Warwick who was killed by Edward's soldiers in the Battle of Barnard in April of 1471. Edward IV later reinstated his brother's titles, making him the great Chamberlain of England, and they came together again. George's younger brother, Richard of Gloucester, wished to marry Anne Neville, the daughter of the Kingmaker, and George was furious at this, and he refused to let Richard have a share in the Earl of Warwick's estates following his death. Because of this, he took Anne Neville captive and hid her from Richard, but the two brothers then came to a compromise. Richard could marry Anne, but George would keep the larger share of Warwick's land and property. George's marriage to Isabel Neville produced two surviving children, Margaret the Countess of Salisbury and also Edward the Earl of Warwick. In December of 1476, George's wife passed away after giving birth, and George then tried to marry Mary, the heiress of Burgundy, but Edward IV once again refused to support the match and George, furious again, left his brother's court. Following his wife's death, George's mental state deteriorated greatly, and he was becoming rather paranoid. He began to believe that his wife had been poisoned by a servant, and George, at a sham trial, later had the servant hanged. George was furious with the lack of support he received from Edward, and he began to spread rumours about the king's legitimacy, and that his father was in fact a lowly archer, with his mother having an affair. He also said that Edward's queen was illegitimate, and Edward, when he found out about the rumours started by his own brother, understandably was raging. He ordered the execution of one of George's key staff, John Stacy, who was accused of witchcraft, and then executed. But George did not stop. He appeared in Westminster, forced a priest to read a declaration of innocence about Stacy, and a rebellion that began in Cambridge was linked to George's doing. George continued to rebel actively against the king and his brother, and George was accused of going too far when he hanged the servant for his wife's supposed poisoning. Edward IV had enough, and he had the last say, ordering the arrest of his own younger brother George and sending him to the Tower of London, accused of high treason. George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, was kept inside the Tower of London for a number of months before Edward pondered what to do. Edward had had enough, and he put his brother on trial for treason. But despite George not being there, Edward sentenced his own brother to death. He demanded that Parliament should pass an act of attender, declaring George guilty of treason, and for this he was sentenced to death. But his execution was not straightforward. George Plantagenet was not beheaded in the usual manner for traitors, or dragged through the streets of London to be hung, drawn and quartered. Whilst inside the most secure building in England, the Tower of London, George was executed in private. Executions for high-profile members of nobility and royalty were sometimes held in private inside the walls of the tower. George's was one of the first of this kind, but he was not given an axeman or a swordsman to perform his execution. To prove a point, and to rain down his authority on his brother, Edward IV ordered that George, his own brother, should be drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine. George would have been surrounded by guards and the barrel of wine, who had brought him to one specific tower. The drowning in wine was a horrific and bloody way to go, and would have induced a significant degree of suffering for George, who would probably have preferred a simpler and quicker beheading. He was lowered and dunked in Malmsey wine, before the final death moment came when he was forced under, taking his final breaths. George Plantagenet is remembered as one of the biggest traitors of the medieval period, and he turned against his own brother and family when the monarchy was unstable. It needed protecting, but George's actions cast doubt on the whole House of York, and his execution was a symbol of how far Edward IV would go to stamp his authority onto anyone who dissented against him.
even his own flesh and blood. In a turn of fate, his own daughter, Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, would also be killed inside the Tower of London during the reign of Henry VIII, with a botched axeman taking her life within the same walls that her father was executed. A portrait of Margaret Pole shows her with a bracelet with a barrel on it, which could be linked to her father's fate and drowning. George Plantagenet's death was a brutal one, and was one which Edward IV did not take lightly. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.